What's up YouTube, it's Brad here, and I had a question that I wanted to ask myself. Could I build a million dollar business in 90 days from nothing? Just like the concept of undercover billionaire. And as I began thinking about it, I actually did, kind of. Stick around to the end of this video and I'll tell you how I was able to buy a hotel using none of my own cash. It's a pretty interesting story, but before we get into that, hit that like button and I will become your best friend for life. Now let's get into it. Undercover Billionaire is a TV show about taking these entrepreneurial businessmen who built businesses that are worth over a billion dollars and dropping them into a town that they know nothing about, giving them nothing but a truck, a cell phone with no contacts, and a hundred dollar bill. And during that time, they're not allowed to discuss who they are. They're not allowed to pull contacts from their other businesses or their other life. Simply put, it's as if this person came right out of the sky and is now trying to build a million dollar business in 90 days. The first season was a guy named Greg Stearns. He owns a mortgage business that's worth a billion dollars. This guy started from nothing, had a hard life, and eventually built this amazing business. First couple of nights, this guy knows no one, is scurrying around different junk sites, looking for things he can sell, ultimately living in his car, eating very little uh, other than the time he ate at a soup kitchen, had a terrible struggle to get started. Eventually starts getting some momentum, winds up flipping a house, which is what I really liked, starting a business, and I'm not gonna ruin the show for you. The problem I have with the show is at the very end how they valuate this business. You see, when you go to a bank, they offer you a loan when you get into certain levels of lending. And when you get up there, they ask you for a personal financial statement, particularly if you're doing a commercial loan. And on that personal financial statement that lists all of your assets and their value and all of your liabilities. And at the end, it produces your net worth. See, net worth is just a formula, how many assets you have minus your liabilities. If you own a million dollars in assets and $500,000 in liability, your net worth is now $500,000. Really simple. The problem with that is you can value your assets however you want. Now there are third party independent asset valuators, kind of like appraisers, and they'll come in and say, we think that this is worth this. Now I've done real estate long enough to know if I had 10 appraisers, I'd have 10 different numbers. The scope is wide with these values. But I started thinking to myself, could I build a million dollar real estate business from nothing? And the more I thought about it, the more I said, wait a second, that's exactly what I'm doing now. My real estate operation is doing that on a quarter by quarter basis. So let me explain what my real estate operation is. And if I were to ever get on the show, Undercover Billionaire, here's exactly what I would do. Number one, I would find the money. I would find my white collar investor. I would find that person who wants to invest their capital but not do the work. You may ask, well, Brad, where would you find those people? I would go to real estate investing clubs, do some direct mail, some cold calling, but most importantly, I would network. The foundation of my business is my network. It's my reputation. It's my ability to talk to people and hear what it is that they're looking to do in their life and in their business and match it to what I'm doing in my business. There's a lot of money out there for blue collar investors like myself to access because the white collar guys don't want to have to install all the systems, do the work, deal with the tenants, deal with the contractors. They don't want to deal with any of that stuff. And so all I do is partner with them. So first I'd find my partner. Second, I would just find deals, fix them and facilitate them. How do I find deals? I'd find deals by talking to other wholesalers, realtors, and then just negotiating. Do you have a house that needs a bunch of work that needs updating? It's got foundation problems. That's got a roof that's leaking that uh, has, is missing a furnace. Cause that's what I'm looking for. So I can add value to that property. So in that conversation, all I do is negotiate a good price buy it, sell it to me and my partner, do the work, make some money. And I would hire a bunch of contractors. Eventually, I work myself out of the business so that I have a project manager, 
like I do in, in Memphis. So I have a, a salesperson like I do in Memphis. Memphis is where I'm currently doing deals. You may ask yourself, Brad, how do you make any money doing that? V very simple. I make money at the beginning, middle, and end. The beginning. When you're hustling and finding deals, it is difficult. You are driving for dollars, door knocking, direct mail, cold calling, Hello there. A networking. You're doing a lot of work and that kind of work deserves to get paid. It's, a, it's very difficult to find a deal at pennies on the dollar. And so whoever I'm working with, I make sure they know, hey, partner, hey, lender, I'm going to be buying this at a discount and selling it to a slightly marked up so that I can make some money on my front end effort. And any white collar investor worth his salt understands, yes, that person who's doing those sales and negotiations and all that kind of stuff, they need to get paid. The second piece of hard work is now in the middle. And there's two ways I make money in the middle. Number one, I manage the contractors. If you've ever managed contractors, it's like herding kittens. They're all over the place. They don't show up. They, they call in sick. They run off with your materials. It's just a nightmare. So to manage contractors deserves a management fee. Small management fee, nothing big, and it's pretty common among investing businesses. The second way I make money in the middle is on the cash flow. With my partners, we split the cash flow. I get a portion that he gets a portion. The rent comes in, taxes, insurance, management, maintenance, vacancy. We take it all out, then we split what's left. That's how I make money, in the middle of the deal. The beginning, middle, and end. When we sell it, we sell it to a turnkey guy, somebody who says, I don't want to do all of that work. I don't want to have to find that deal, fix it up. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to pay almost retail for it, sometimes a little bit above retail, because it's a nice house that's cash flowing with a nice tenant. All I want is the cash flow. We'll sell it to them. Sometimes we'll sell that house that's all fixed up to someone who's going to live there, a nice homeowner. That's my operation. So if I ever got onto Undercover Billionaire in whatever town across this country, all I would do is install my operation. Simple. How do I get to a million dollars in 90 days? Well, if I'm buying houses that are worth a hundred thousand dollars, I'm picking them up for 50, putting 20 grand into them and they're worth a hundred grand. All I got to do is buy 10 houses. For us, 10 houses in a quarter is light work. We would be disappointed with only buying 10 houses in a quarter. We average buying 50 or 60 a year. Now, does that bring that to that million dollar valuation? Again, I don't know. The way they evaluate it is odd. Is it the total amount of what it's worth? Is it how much cash it actually brings in? You see, most people when they hear make a million dollar business think to themselves, that that business is going to bring in actually a million dollars in cash. But the value of the business is going to be worth more than that because of the cash flow, because of the assets that the business has. So could I do a million dollars in 90 days? Depends on how you evaluate it, but yeah, I think I could. Now I want to tell you the story of how I kind of did do that. I bought a hotel in Colorado using none of my own money. Why? Because I didn't have any of my own money. Seller was looking to sell this hotel for $2.75 million. It had been listed for a while and nobody wanted it. I love buying houses that are listed too high. I get creative with how to craft that deal together. And so here's how I got creative with terms. See, I'll give you the cash if you give me the terms. What he wanted was $2.75 million. I said, I'll give that to you within five years. Give me an option to give that to you. But in the meantime, give me the right to rent this property. And I'm going to rent it from you for $17,500 a month. He wanted a security deposit for $17,500, an option fee for 25,000, and then wanted to escrow $100,000 for the plans that I had for renovating the hotel. So I had to come up with 160,000 bucks and I had zero. See, this hotel was historically generating about $300,000 in room revenue. But I knew if I could convert this from 13 rooms to 18 rooms, I would be able to generate another $200,000 in revenue. Each room bring in about $40,000 a year. So the third floor of this hotel was totally unfinished. It was not being rented by anyone. And so my plan was to come in, renovate that third floor and add five more sleeping rooms, therefore increasing the revenue by $200,000. He agreed to it and I had to figure out a way to come up with $160,000 plus operating costs in order to put this deal together. So I did three things. Two of them I do not recommend. First, I got a hard money loan from a doctor who was wanting to lend and get his money 
going. I gave him 12% interest. He lent me $75,000 unsecured because he trusted me. Number two, I went and got a bunch of credit cards and pulled out $40,000 against those credit cards. I do not recommend that. I wasn't quite there. I needed an extra 50 or so. Number three, I did what's called flash cash. I borrowed $50,000 from a buddy of mine that got put into the escrow account with this rehab. And one thing that I made sure to negotiate was that on this escrow account, I could pull out that money whenever I wanted, that I had total control, that I had to prove what I was gonna put it towards, but I was going to pull it out. We put that money in the escrow account, let it sit for a couple of days, and I pulled out that 50 grand to pay him off again. Pretty slick. Now, what I've got is from October of 2012 to December of 2012, we are like madmen, rehabbing these rooms, getting them ready to rent, going from 13 to 18 so that we hit the peak season, which is the winter time in Colorado. During that time, I negotiated also that I was not gonna pay him any rent until the rehab was complete. Again, I'll give you the price, just give me the terms. In two months, we add those four bedrooms. And of course, during the construction, had a lot of hiccups. One of those hiccups was flooding the hotel. My contractor drove a nail through a stud into a sprinkler line that burst on the third floor and flooded it all the way to the basement. I walked into my hotel with six inches of standing water. So even despite all that, we got the rehab finished by December 1st of 2012. And now I had extra cash flowing assets in these five rooms that should generate an additional $200,000 a year in revenue. Now, if we use the same methods to evaluate businesses like they do an undercover billionaire, that 200,000 at a 10 cap would mean that I added an additional $2 million valuation to my business. And I did so within 90 days. So did I become an undercover billionaire? Well, no, because I wasn't on the show. But did I meet the conditions? I don't know. That's why I said at the beginning, could I build a million dollar business in 90 days? I kind of did by accident. That's my story about how I bought a hotel using none of my money that now throws off over 800,000 in revenue and did so just by being creative. You see, you don't need money to do real estate. What you need is education, drive, intelligence, hustle, the ability to put things together that work for everybody. See, through that entire process, everybody got what they wanted. A hard money lender got paid off within six months. My credit cards got paid off within that first year. My flash cash guy got paid off within a couple of days. And I paid the owner off a couple of years later when I actually exercised my option and purchased the property for myself. You can craft these deals to make it work for everybody. So could I drop my operation in any market in America, create a million dollar business within 90 days from scratch? The answer is, I think I can. Will I try to find out? Yeah. So I'm gonna keep producing these videos, giving you an inside look at my real estate investing operation. Do me a favor like this video. Any questions that you have, just put them in the comment section. I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.